Airspace. Airspace is clear, launch area clear, spinning motors. Yeah, I mean, you know, our backgrounds were in robotics and automation, um, and we were, it was always pretty obvious to us that automation would have a really big impact on logistics over the next 10 years. And when we started looking, learning more about the logistics industry generally, there are like a lot of new logistics startups, but they're all focusing on like delivering hamburgers yes. to like rich people yes. in cities. <laughs> And that seemed kind of weird to us because if you look at the logistics industry generally, like most of the logistics companies who have been around for 100, 100 years plus are all serving like the golden billion. So these are the richest billion people on the planet, many of whom live in the Philippines, but just in the cities. And it just seemed really, and, and as a result of that, you know, five and a half million kids die every year due to lack of access to basic medical products. And so when we were thinking about, okay, so if we wanted to invest our lives building a new kind of logistics company, what would be important to build for the world? It seemed like, you know, we're pretty sure that hamburgers in cities are covered, but like, why not build a company that is focused on serving all humans equally, use technology that should fundamentally be able to serve everybody, not rely on infrastructure, don't don't like allow us ourselves to fall into the excuse of like, oh, you know, couldn't possibly solve that problem, because that's kind of what we do. Like, for a hundred years, we've said like, oh yeah, of course we can like be building you know fusion reactors and work in like quantum computing and you know trying to build augmented reality glasses and all these really cool things, but you know try to solve logistics and <clears throat> Rwanda, no way, that's like way too hard. Mm -hmm. I just think that's garbage. So it seemed to us like if someone could create a new kind of logistics system that's more focused on serving all humans equally. Um, and build technology that would back that up, that'd be a really good thing to spend our lives on. And that's why we started building it. Do you guys want to see a flight? Yeah! yeah. yeah. All right. You guys can feel free to come up a little bit closer. Oh, Just nice. watch out for the propellers because we are powered on. You're still after burn? Um, I'm just kidding. Not today. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> um, so step one would be, you know, load up your package that you're going to deliver into the belly of the aircraft over on a stand here. So you would scan it first, associate that package to the body that you're sending it in. So here I have just a fake uh, package code here. Associate it to the body. Okay. Uh, and then this is really cool if anyone wants to check this out to do control surface checks. We have an app that we developed oh, wow. that uses um, computer vision. Um, so you can check that out. There's a uh, diagram of all the control surfaces and then it overlays those 3D boxes. Do you see those? Oh, wow. So I can move around and it still tracks and it gives me an angle readout. And what we're looking for is to make sure that we're neutral and also hitting our max deflection up and down. And it'll fail if it doesn't hit those angles. <laughs> So I can scan the vehicle within just about 20 seconds. Okay, that's done. Okay, so the aircraft's ready for launch Whoa. that quickly. Oh, okay. So I need one volunteer to launch the aircraft. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is release the emergency stop button. I'm gonna push this blue enable button that'll spin the motors. Then I'll do a three, two, one countdown. All you have to do is press the green button. Sound good? Awesome. Okay. awesome. Airspace is clear, launch area clear, spinning motors. Oh. Oh. Three, two, one. Go! Oh. And say there's an emergency or something, right? The Civil Aviation Authority can press a button, you can say return, I want it to wait and hold, or like you can say I want it to drop where it is right now and like parachute down. Where's it going to parachute down? It's going to come over here. See where the cows are? <laughs> Pass the ambulance. Because um, right now they're very strict with the drone piloting licenses yep. at home. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, we're so far much more advanced than any of the Obviously, yeah. So a lot of um, 
partnerships we have with governments, we often will work with them and teach them a lot of mm. like the technology that we use mm -hmm. and how to track and make it safe. What we'd really like to do in the Philippines is make it like the drone center of Asia. Okay. Yeah. Because it makes so much sense with the islands. Mm -hmm. Everyone speaks English, uh, very innovation friendly, and it's going to be a huge market. Yeah. So we can create a lot of jobs there. Yeah. Transfer a lot of skills. So it's going to come over here. All right, guys, it's going to come over here and it's going to drop. I'm just going to get a grab. Here it comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got oh, here you go. Drop. Oh, my God. I missed it. <laughs> I think we had one break the first month, but we haven't in years. So everything is like... So can you explain what all of this is made of? So we made... It's also all completely biodegradable. So our That's drones amazing. are green. Yeah. We're not using... And we're just using electricity. And this is also, also all completely biodegradable. Wow. So what is it made of? Uh, it's paper. It's paper. Oh. Super is light. Is it breakage? No. Black paper. Yeah. The point is to make it really green. Hmm. <laughs> And the inside, obviously, there's cushioning. Exactly, exactly. And proper insulation. And for insulation for the for cold. So we do um, two to eight degrees uh, centigrade, which is like most vaccines and uh, most blood products. I'm sorry, I forgot the range. So uh, under perfect conditions, it's like over 300 kilometers. Shoot. But we do 80 kilometers there, 80 kilometers back. That's one, that's one just because we want to take. Country. Well, we want to take care. Make sure if there's any like if there's, mon there's really heavy uh, wind or rain that we can fly mm -hmm. mountains. There and back. So 80 kilometers one way, 80 kilometers back. Okay. Singapore. That's what we do. Just to be safe. Yeah. Very conservative. Singapore two yeah. Brendan, how, how much load can, can it do? Uh, so 1.8 kilograms. 1.8? We've, we've tested, I think we're testing up to uh, two now, but 1.8. For medical supply products, aren't that heavy. Yeah. And if there's an emergency, we can just send a lot. We just send drone, 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 drone. There you go. We really want to make a priority. Yeah, so we'd like to help you guys out. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Yeah. Technology. So even about a year ago, we were we had a, a, an old version we, that we just retired and had a one meter hook. And that's the we're like, oh, we're one meter accurate. It's so incredible. But now we're less than a centimeter. Yeah, just a lot of So think about like it's roughly a year, year and a half, like how fast we're improving. And so we're just launching a new version after this, which is quieter, it has more power, has a smaller battery, but it's more powerful. Um, it's pretty it's pretty incredible. How is the acceptance when you start in different locations? It's it seems like science fiction to people, right? So the first week they're like, What this is crazy? It's like this this plane that flies itself, it's delivering medical supplies. And after a while people just get used to it. And they're just like, ah, oh, you know. It's like, it's like two minutes late, where is it? How long have you been with Zipline? Uh, about three years. Yep, so I was here for the very first yeah. flights of this particular generation Amazing. aircraft. Amazing. And a little bit of the last generation. And you were involved with the design, I assume? Uh, mostly uh, feedback, so user feedback. So just things that are a headache for an operator and making mm -hmm. those easy. Um, so for something like this, what's your background going into managing these things? I, so I, did not, I didn't study aerospace engineering or anything like that, but I, I've been an RC pilot for many years. So I've always had that passion for aviation and anything that flies. So and now it's, your hobby is your uh, career and you're saving lives. Yeah. You ever yeah. think that when you were flying RC planes that you're going to be saving lives? I had no idea, <laughs> but it's really cool. Yeah, I, I definitely see the value in the, the new technology and, and what it can do. So it's, it's really cool to be a part of that. Are you involved with training the uh, the local um, employees in the different countries? That's a good question. So we actually have a training academy in Rwanda. So I can follow you, by the way. You don't oh, have sure. to carry these. Yeah, 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 yeah. Typically, when a new employee joins, within the first few weeks, they go to Rwanda so they can go through that training academy. Uh, we do flight operations and also fulfillment. So and how long is the training? I think it's about three weeks so we do it all is, is how long it is right now. Yeah. Uh, that would be uh, so what we do is we typically set up a this document, we will provide you with the Yeah, so that right now, as soon as they dock it, it's uploading the data from the flight and also starting to recharge the battery right away. Uh, so if it's about a, if it's a 20 minute flight, it takes about 40 minutes to charge. It's about two to one. That's fast. Yeah, it's not too bad. And then you just have to have like two or three batteries per aircraft. That way you can quickly just cycle while the other one's charging. Follow me. So normally this is pretty quick, we're kind of talking through it, but yeah, yeah it's just battery, wing, and then body. So On average, how long is the, assemb the disassembly process? Uh, so normally you would have a couple operators, not just one. So uh -huh. you can not one talking them. while he's doing it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
but you can do it in about 30 seconds. I'm actually gonna throw it on this wing rack right here. So this way. Oh really? That's how old you are. Okay, and then last thing is just getting the body off here. In the old videos that I was watching, um, the hook was like sticking out completely. It was yeah, like a hole, it was like a rod. Right, kind of like a, an aircraft carrier catching a plane. It was a deployable tail hook. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like this. Um, there was a lot of complicated mechanism there and a lot of extra weight and room for failure. So we got rid of that. We just made it a fixed, you know, tail hook here. And um, so basically the line used to just stay still. It didn't move up and down. So you'd fly into the line. Whereas now this, the poles can move up and down to, to kind of talk with the aircraft and sync up. <laughs> Uh, so we've taken a lot of complexity and weight out of the aircraft itself. So that's so cool. Yeah. And I just throw this over on the stand here. Oh, <laughs> 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 You guys want to get some food? Thanks, man. Yeah, we no appreciate so it. So that yeah. would be ready to just load another package. And this is where, when you're, let's say, um, sending out a package, mm -hmm. this is where you put it in here yep. while it's on the rack. Exactly. And you yeah. lock it. At a typical distribution center, they'd get a package that already has the content scanned and everything in the in the inventory system. We load it, or sorry, you scan the package, you load it, you scan the top so it knows which aircraft it's in. And it's like an iOS app. Yeah, and that's all something we've developed in-house. I mean, we, we actually haven't spent most of the money that we've raised in a good position to grow really quickly over the next couple of years but um you know for us i mean we're not like there's so much that that we still need to prove and a big thing that we need to prove is that we can we can um, reach national scale in a country with more than 100 million people and i think that one of the cool things has been there's been not only a lot of engagement from you know, part like partners in government but also i mean the fact that you guys are here when brennan and i were there we had the you know the chance to meet a whole bunch of different um, kind of leaders of industry in the Philippines who are really looking for like innovative solutions and helping the Philippines kind of lead the way and be a technology leader in Southeast Asia. And so my assumption is that um, given that, I think we're really hopeful that like if we can form the right kind of partnership, uh, then the Philippines is going to be an amazing kind of role model for the rest of the region in terms of what's possible. I mean, it's going to be a role model for the world. Um, assuming that we move forward in the next like a couple months, then the Philippines will be the largest country in the world that has national instant logistics. Like, there's this assumption that like technology is always going to benefit like the richest one percent, or it's going to start in the richest parts of the world. And I think it'd be so cool to be able to show like, look, certain you know, certain kinds of technology that are going to be inherently like democratizing and equalizing access and improving health outcomes for people who are left behind. It'd be really cool. I think that's perfect.